Oh, look at that. Two more... Um, look at that. Two more uh, codex entries. Let's read them. The Spanish Conquistadors. The Conquistadors were the soldiers and explorers who conquered most of North and South America and put it under Spanish rule in the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries. Most of them were of noble descent and had already served as soldiers in Spanish battles in Europe. Uh, they were mostly volunteers in the Americas, providing their own weapons and materials. The captains were appointed by the Spanish crown and were accorded authority under royal commission. The first encounter between the Conquistadors and the American natives ended with many of the Spaniards being taken as slaves by the Mayans. But that was the first time. The next expedition, better equipped and with greater horses, great horses turned the tables on the Mayans. The horses astounded the natives, and it is reported that a handful of Spanish riders were able to keep 10,000 warriors in check. Conquistadors often overstepped the authority that they had been accorded, most notably Hernán Cortés, who ordered all of his expedition's ships burned and founded a city on the mainland. They were often ruthless in their quest for wealth and power and were accused of cruelty and barbary by some of their more humane contemporaries, though even back in Europe they were considered awful, awful people. Yep, sounds about right. Good old colonizers. I say that sarcastically. And then the Totonac. Totonac. The Totonac people resided in the eastern, coastal, and mountainous regions of Mexico at the time of the Spanish arrival in 1519. They are one of the possible builders of the pre-Columbian city of El Tajin, and further maintained quarters in Teo Teotihuacan. Teotihua really bad at these names sometimes. Teotihuacan, a city which they claim to have built. Until the mid-19th century, they were the world's main producers of vanilla. Ooh, interesting. The Aztecs labeled the region of the Totonac of the Totonac, uh, Totonacapan, which then extended roughly from pa Papantla in the north to Campaula Kem in the south. Totonacapan was largely hot and humid, along with the normal agricultural crops of maize, manioc, wash beans, pumpkin, and chili peppers. The region was noted for its production of liquid amber and cotton. Even during the disastrous Central Mexican Famine of 1450 to 1454, the region remained fertile and many Aztecs were forced to sell themselves or their family members as slaves to the Totonac in exchange for some days. That's interesting. That's an interesting fact that I didn't know about. I mean, I'm, I'm not as well versed in, like, the uh, Central and Southern American cultures of, of uh, pre-colonization, but that's an interesting fact that I didn't think about. The region of Totonacapan was subject to Aztec military incursions from the mid-15th century until the Spanish arrival. The Aztec built fortifications throughout the region, but there were several rebellions against their rule. Major Totonac centers were Papantla, with an estimated population of 60,000 in 1519, Salapa, around 120,000, and Sempoala, around 80,000. Sempoala was the first indigenous city-state visited by Hernán Cortés in his march to the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. The Totonacs of Sempoala um, joined forces with Cortes and along with the Tlaxcalan Plax Indians contributed significantly to the Spanish conquest. Yep, because Cortes allied with them so we could have men power because the Aztecs were a very large and very powerful culture. Then, smallpox. Wait, I was near Semp. Was it Sempoala I'm near or was it Papantla? Because one of those two has smallpox right now, if I remember correctly. But we'll see once we get back into the... Uh, see what we get in here. So where am I? So I was at Papantla, I believe. Which is... Oh, it's Papantla that had all the... Remember. One of, one of these two, I think it was this one, had the smallpox, and then I moved up through here and then this way, I think. Or did I go to this one? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, we can always go check real quick. Auto assign. There we go. Sure. That's being worked on. Excellent. There we go. Let me go double check because I can't remember if I've been here or not yet. It's gonna bother me if I can't think. Oh, I can't seem to interact with. Oh, I can interact with you. Apatla. 
You come across a peaceful village resting in the shadow of a large mountain. The people there seem wary of your presence, but they seem to have a fondness for trinkets and precious objects, and they might be convinced to turn to you. Okay, so I haven't been to Papantla yet. Gotcha. Find the chieftain. The ruler of Papantla is a beautiful woman in her early 40s, clad in an unusually simple dress that drapes elegantly from, from her shoulders. She is introduced as Zelozhax. Uh, but with your interpreter translates as Kaliandra, the name of a flower that grows in the south. Welcome to Papantla, White One. Why have you come to our settlement? We wish to trade with you. She sifts her weight. We have had dealings with your kind before. They did not leave a good impression. If you wish to trade with my people, you must show them that you are different. I can I can see this where this is going. Papantla is part of um, Tanakapan. Tanaka, and it belongs to the Totonac, yet the Aztec Empire controls us all against our will. If you want to gain our favor, you must strike against the Aztec oppressors. Do you have anything particular in mind? Um, she flashes a crooked smile. Tenochtitlan regularly sends patrols to collect their taxes and dues, and young men and women to be sacrificed upon the steps of their great temples. Track one of these patrols and kill the Aztec warriors. If the deed is done, then we will trade with you. I don't need your trust. All I wish is to trade with you. I have brought useful goods from across the land, and your traders will be enriched by my patronage. He grumbles. Perhaps you are right. We will open our market to you, but be warned that we are keeping an eye on your actions. Can I also ask... Can I still do the thing? Oh, I, I think I just skipped out on a quest, unfortunately. We'll see. Papantla Markets. Papantla's market is not enormous. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. I suddenly had to sneeze, like, real bad. Papantla's market is not enormous, but it seems to have a wide range selection of goods. The many artisans peddling their works on the street seem mostly focused on things that are of no use to you. But you find a few people selling torches cheaply, and a small family of hunters is making spike traps. Well, let's trade. What do they got? I do want more... I do want more rations, but they... What do they have that they're in... Dire... They're not really in dire need of anything. Okay. How much can I get for this? 10 rations for 8 medicine? That works. Not a bad deal. Almost a little a little over one per. Can I talk with you still? Finders available if you Alright, let's try over here. Let's see what this says. Your company Tomas. Your company is moving down a busy street when you encounter a clearly European man dressed in black armor. The man was moving in the other direction, but he stops dead in his tracks when the crowd parts to reveal you. Ah. In the blink of an eye, Laszlo Pollock is at the front, weapon in hand, immaculately sharpened blade held barely an inch from the man's throat. Yep, I figured. Uh, Laszlo wasn't looking for a friend. He was looking for someone that he's probably has a, has a grudge against. Pollock says some nothing, merely staring down his weapon into his old friend's startled eyes. Laszlo stammers weakly. Laszlo, how did you find me? Lazlo's voice is calm, but it carries a cold edge. Lady Justice brought me here so I might bring balance to her scales. Laz sinks heavily. What are you going to do? A slight drop in Lazlo's tone sends considerable menace to his reply. I will execute you as the deserter you are. Ah, he's a deserter. For a lot of soldiers, that is one of the worst crimes you can commit. Please. Lazlo cuts him off before he has time to utter his plea. I will not tolerate your excuses. It was a brutal battle, is what is that what you're going to say? The brutality of the battle only made your flight a greater betrayal. Laz's eyes widen. No. Again, Lazlo cuts him off. You thought you were going to die? Because of you, we lost people that might otherwise have lived. Our left flank fell within minutes. We were completely overrun and Dalviano was killed. Ah, he was there for when Bartolomeo Dalviano died. Interesting. Frustrated, Zaz sc screams at the top of his lungs, fiddle flying through the air. It's made no difference. The fight was already lost, and you know it. If I hadn't run, that flank had fallen anyway, and I would have fallen with it. It would have just been another senseless death, and... With a swift and powerful thrust, Laszlo leads his weapon directly through Thomas's torso. The deserter sputters and spits out blood, gazing uncomprehendingly, uncomprehending at the steel protruding from his chest. Laszlo leans closer, his voice shaking, is shaking slightly. We were friends, Thomas. Brothers in arms, and you betrayed me. Your reasons really don't matter. Laszlo retracts his sword with a cruel pull, and Zaz falls to the ground, staring his old friend at the, 
as the life fades from his eyes. Laszlo stands over the body, still as a statue. I'm kind of disappointed we didn't have a chance to intervene because, I don't know, maybe it would have been better to stop that. You lied to me. Without moving, Laszlo replies, everything I told you is true. Why didn't you explain your true goal? He shakes his head. I didn't know that I would kill him until I looked him into his eye, into his eyes. What did you see? Doesn't matter what I saw. What I felt was anger and betrayal. Are you satisfied now? Are you satisfied with pointless revenge for something that you can't change? He, um, his grip on his t weapon tightens. Um, it had to be done. I had to restore honor to my company. You will no longer want my service after this, I understand. I will find my way back to Santo Domingo. Otherwise, I will follow you until you dismiss me. Now that all this is behind you, you might as well stay. I don't do agree with him, but I'm not going to give up a good soldier. Laszlo nods and sheathes his weapon while walking back into the into your lines. Thank you, Capitan. Okay. So we also avoid... Uh, so we avoided having to actually, like, kill someone. Although... Aztec Patrol. Your party, your advance party doubles back to warn you that they've encountered the an Aztec Patrol up ahead. The Aztecs appear to be aware of your presence and are actively intercepting your course. Well, if they're actively intercepting us, fuck it. Fuck it. Let's go. Aragones, let's go. I think I'm in the mood for a battle, and the Aztecs seem to be assholes to these right now. Eliminate all enemies. There are... Not that many of them, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six enemies, and I am in a very beautiful position, not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. One second. Forgot I had... Up. There we go. Alright. So, we are in a very good position, not gonna lie. So... Doctor... Hunter could be stationed here just to catch anyone. Mm. We'll have Trevino stationed there. We'll have Isabella stationed over here. Uh, Velasquez, Ayana, Rapper, and then Aragos, you can just be wherever. They just need to come to us, so I don't really care what happens to them after that. So, Overwatch... Overwatch, whoops, Overwatch, um, have you over here, maybe, you also Overwatch, you, Overwatch, Pintado, also Overwatch, And then Aragones, you just be ready to move whatever way, because you can move basically any most places on this map. No problem. Alright, let's see what this goes. Alright. Okay, figured you'd miss. Aha! And a miss again. Tayana, what you got for me? Walk your shots? Okay, fine. I'll take that at least. Of course you missed. Wait, why didn't why didn't my hunter shoot? Use you. Oh, there you are. Yeah. And he blocked. Hmm. Fight the predicament. Let's switch you around. Stun you so that you can get back here. Fire on you. There we go. Aragones, get in that melee. Nice, 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 nice. You, Isabella. Get a nice little poisoning. No, you're not in a good position, so. There we go. Perfect. 
Nice little poison shot on you. There we go. You also get a shot. And miss. Of course. And Isabella drop fire there. Actually. There we go. Interrupt. I think that works out. Uh, Velasquez actually get back behind cover. There they go. They're off to the races. Ah, going to back up that person. Won't do them much good. All right, let's move you up. Go there, melee. Let's stun you. And shoot you. There we go, good uh, good shot. Trevino, you get up there. Aragones, let's get a feint going through. Vino, there. We get a shot off on any of y'all. No, so let's move over here real quick. And start getting a shot off on the shaman, because they are going to heal him. I'm not careful. And Velasquez. Velasquez just, I don't know, overwatch or something, I don't know. There we go. Oh no, I'm cursed. I don't even know what that does still. Aha! I'm even that close. I will beat you with my club! Oh, or stab you. Either or. And get you over here. Um, keep firing at that shaman, I guess. There we go. Argones. Damn. Ravino. There we go. Down you go. You go up here to block that one off, and you go up here to block the shaman off. Now they can't get to my guys as easily. All right. And there we go. Did it. All right. So that's good. So Aragona is Let's do a little flank action, flank a Rooney action. Then I'm gonna stun you. Because it's funny. Then. There we go. And then we go. Oh, uh, and a miss. All right, I think we're good. I think we're set. There's only one enemy left, and they can't do shit. Bye. Okay, never mind. Now it's bye. And the whack. Flawless victory. Your troops face off against the Aztec patrol and emerge victorious. Your people quickly rifle through the belongings of your vanquished foes and add their flute to their carts. There's an unusually large amount of valuable trinkets with a large enough range of artistic expression that you suspect that they must have been stolen or raised as taxes from remote villages. You also recover a, a healthy amount of rations and a pouch of untreated medicinal herbs. Excellent.
talking. I wonder if I can... I think that's the patrol she was talking about, so maybe... Okay, it doesn't do anything. Okay. Well, now I think we can just start heading... I want to head... This way. Head this way. Right, one second. Then back. And there we go over here. I think I got enough medicine, but I think I got a decent amount of medicine, but it does it never hurts to get more, right? Uh, there we go. Yep. I think we're good. Oh, oh, I need to. Oh, yeah, the contextual repair the cannon thing. I need to do that. There we go. And kill the boar. There is a grave over there, which I could go to. Let's go to it. Well, first, let's go to here. All right, so first, prepare the cannon. Prepare the cannon should be the next thing he does. Um, Lopez, uh, Tayana. Tayana, preserve. You also preserve. Then we'll get, we'll get Reyes to preserve as well because that way we get all of that. Uh, Teresa, do some herbalism. There we go. Has restored your cannon to working order. Hell yeah. And there's a treasure chest over there, which we can get. Get that real quick. Um, let's go to this. Let's check out this grave. So much of the map is being filled in. Check out this grave. See what it is. Because it's a Christian grave. Makeshift grave. A wooden cross marks a grave here. The cross is clearly conceived, but inelegantly constructed. It is ugly and ramshackle. The text on the cross is barely legible. Pick it up. You exhume the buried corpse. The skull is unusually large with a large, a very large cavity for the brain. Okay. Uh, let's let's get this point of interest. Let's go back up to get this point of interest. Now let's take. Wait, what's the other raid burial grounds? Natives have been known to bury their dead nearby. Send an expedition member to search the graves for valuable trinkets. A higher patrolling skill in your own scouting. I'm not gonna do that. I already did one. I probably shouldn't have done that anyway. So I'm just gonna. Not do that for right now. There we go. And up we go. There's the cairn. Let's go get that cairn. Find the cairn, find the cairn. Passions, assumption. Excellent. And meat. Meat, 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 meat. All right, let's keep exploring north, I guess. Might as well, right? There's a lot of map to cover. Another point of interest. And camp. Slowly but surely, my rations grow, grow smaller. Uh, let's see. 
How far? I want. Let's actually try going as far west as we can go. I'm curious what how what we'll run into if we just keep going west. Okay. Bow sign. Uh, Reyes, you're not doing anything useful. Get that pres get that preserving done. There we go. Experience. Chart the planes. Chart the planes is four out of ten, and I got seven out of ten for that. Oh, whoa! What's that? What is that? There's something off to the north. There's something off to the northeast. Like a, it's like a gen. It's like a big marker on the map. What is that? Well, now it's useless to go to that one because no point in doing that. Oh, let's go to that then real quick. Grab that. Let's just keep going this way, because there's something over here that, on the map that I'm notice noticing, it's like a fortress, it looks like. Okay. Going. In. Yeah, it's like a fortune. Yeah, what the hell is this place? I cannot, and I cannot enter it? God damn it, of course it's right before. Oh, it's a, it's like a big fort. Interesting. Oh, let's check it out. See what happens. Someone here to talk to, so let's see what we we deal with. Stonehouse tribe, the Fortaleza de Gutierrez. It's nestled serenely between the river and a rocky ridge, surrounded by meticulously cleared woodland. It's a suitably sturdy building for a fortress, and yet it looks surprisingly idyllic. Catch a glimpse of movement between the forts of the buildings of the fort. Send somebody to scout the fortress. Um. Probably send one of my better soldiers, so Aragones, you are a scout. Montego, Montego Aragones sneaks off along the tree line towards the river and out of sight. A few minutes later, he returns um uh turns towards a few minutes later he returns unharmed to report. It would appear the fort is being used as a home by a group of tribals. They are using Spanish weapons and armor as decoration. I would not like to imagine how they come to possess such items. Oh, one second. All right, in the back. We will make the we must we must not jump to conclusions. Let's make contact. You and a small group of troops carefully advance upon the fortress with your weapons sheathed. As soon as the guard spots you come in, all the tribals grab their weapons and form up near the gate. The man who must presumably be in charge is at the front, observing you with a suspicious look. I am Bruno Villarejo. We harbor no hostile intentions towards you. The chief nods. I am Chipak, leader of the Stonehouse tribe. How did you come to live in these buildings? The place was built by your people. When they lived here, they ravaged the surrounding villages, subjugating the tribes and taking tribute from us. When they left, we took their house, stone house. Ambi, Ambi, what happened to the people who lived here? The last, the last many times we came to pay tribute, we found only five men here. They were the same men, and they looked more distraught with every passing moon. It was clear that the rest of their people had left them behind. The final time we came with the tribute, we killed them. This has been our village since. I'm here to reclaim the fortress on behalf of my people. The chief frowns and shifts his weight a little, his grip on his spear tightens. And that was not intended to be... Uh, sorry, I offer to pay you to let us resume ownership. We will not give up our home. We paid tribute to your people for many moons, and we defeated them in battle to gain control of the house. We have as much right to it as you. Bring out a chest with 3,000 valuables. 
When your uh, servants open the chest, the chieftain's eyes grow wide, but he quickly regains his composure. No amount of trinkets will buy our honor. Reyes leans closer in. I dare say, if we can muster another chest like this, the chieftain will find that his principles aren't as cut in stone as he'd like. Bring in another chest with 2,000 valuables, because I have the money. The chi Chipbox stares at the chest um, for a long time, his inner turmoil quite evident. He looks back across his tribesmen, then back to the chest, then finally at his tribesmen, then back to the chest. Finally, he nods. I accept your gift, Shining Warrior. The stone house will once more belong to your kind. Run to the 5,000. You give the tribe a day to move out. When they've all left and taken their belongings with them, you go over the whole structure to see what state it is in. Your conclusion is that it is not currently fit to even house your troops when you are here. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to fix this place up, eh? Let's see the ruins. If you wish to rebuild any part of Gutierrez's fortress, you will have to appoint somebody to stay here and oversee the construction. You can always pick them up and bring them with you late again later if you change your mind. Appoint someone. Um, you know what? Laszlo. Have fun. You're up, you appoint Laszlo Pollock to oversee the construction of the fortress. Um, the soldier salutes. It shall be an honor to oversee the reconstruction of the fortress. There's clearly a lot we can do to make this place more fit as a garrison, but first we'll have to establish a port on the east coast so we can ship in workers and supplies. Then we must rebuild the main building. Wouldn't you agree? Let's rebuild the fortress. Rebuilding the fortress will open up a lot of other options, but it will cost you around 5,000 valuables and it will take 10 days. Are you sure you want to do this? Fucking go. We'll get straight to it, Captain. Alright. Fuck yeah. Got a fortress now. And I think this is a good place position for Laszlo. Oh. I see mountains over here. Let's actually go back around the mountains. All right, let's see. And we keep going. We keep going. I want to just see how far up towards the tree line in this mountain ridge line that we can go. Like, can we actually cross over these mountains? is what I'm trying is I want what I want to experiment with right now. And this is actually nice because it means that um this is actually nice because this means that I have one less ration to use. And I could still use him if and I could still need him if I use him if I need it. Okay, I can go through the mountains. Excellent. I confused a tree for a person. Tree hunter. Shepherd of the forest. Ooh, what is this? Another grave. Grave. Oh, it's right there. Oh, but it... Animal herd. More meat! You have unlocked axe level 2. Nice. Got the flowers, and now... Utilitarian grave. A hastily erected cross bears a mark here. Though the marker was clearly made in all haste, it has made it la to last and its text is still readable. Dig up the grave. To exhume the buried corpse, the skull bears clear signs of trepanning. For trepanning is like you you cut like a hole in the brain to like drain fluid out of it or something like that. I think is how is what trepanning is about. At least if I remember correctly. Might as well just keep exploring through this area. Oh, what do we got here? Whoa, we got a villa. We got a little village out here. Sheltered hut. Check it out real quick. There, and then we'll have Ayana. No, which does the do all preserving? No, you cannot. So we'll have you do the preserving, and you do some hunting, and Sanchez. Do some building on another axe. Teresa, do some herbalism. There we go. Well, let's check this place out now. The sheltered hut. Color. 
A small hut stands in the mountains overlooking an unreasonably idyllic little valley shielded from the winds by cliffs on all sides. You can make out a figure sitting in the shade beneath a tree next to the hut. Approach it. Coming closer, you discover that the figure is a middle-aged Spanish man clad in the simple garb of an Aztec farmer. Uh, that ain't no Aztec farmer guard in the painting. He looks up as you greet him and jumps to his feet. What, are you? Are the frogs playing tricks on me again, or are you Spanish? I am Capitan Bruno Villarejo, and these are my troops. From the rear of the caravan, Anacaona runs up to the Spaniard and jumps in his arms with a delighted squeal. Uncle Miguel, you're all right. I'm so glad to see you again. The man lights up like a little lantern. Like a lantern. Anna, my dear little girl, what on earth are you doing out here with these dangerous people? He grins at you. Anna breaks away from the hug and jumps in place a couple times. You told me of so many things you'd seen and done and I was really bored in the palace. I just had to get out of there and do and see some things for myself. I couldn't take it anymore. Miguel nods understandingly. Then he straightens up and turns his attention back to you. He bows courteously and with a considerable amount of flourish. My name is Miguel Sicart and I am a scholar from Spain. I came to the New World following that fool, Felipe Gutierrez. Now I live the simple life in the safety of this small hidden valley. Come, come, I'll show you my home. All right, sure. The place is small and rather messy. It has recognizably European furniture, which he's put together himself, clearly learning as he went along. Every horizontal surface is covered in some kind of homemade tool or bowl or trinket, and a single sturdy shelf on a wall holds all the books he must have brought from Spain. The bookshelf has the appearance of some sort of shrine. You're in luck. I've just made a fresh frog paella. Come, have a taste. Tell me what you think. I've had paella before. It's not bad, but frog paella sounds fascinating. He brings you a clay bowl filled with paella. It looks sort of suspicious, but it smells pretty good, actually. Get the paella. You eat with Sicart, trying to get him to explain exactly what happened to the Gutierrez expedition and why he ended up living here. But he's successfully dodging your questions quite successfully. You can't be certain if he's genuinely out of his mind or if he's just playing up his eccentricity as a way to stay in control of the conversation. Finishing your plate of frog paella... You begin to feel a little lightheaded, as though your mind is expanding and slowly breaking up to pursue a hundred different thoughts at once. Fucking, fucking drug me. The world fragments before your eyes, and a splendid show of colored lights coalesce into the figure of a Mayahuel, of Mayahuel, whom you are vaguely aware of as a goddess of fertility and alcohol. You're not sure what this means. Oh god, I have been drugged because he gave me, like, fucking frogs. What was on those frogs? Mayahuel is enormous, but kneels so as not to tower above you. She stretches out her arms and hands you an apple. You find yourself eating the entire apple in one bite, core and all, and you can feel its seeds separate from the pulp and flow not to your stomach, but to your mind, where they blossom into a spectacular tree of understanding. You are at peace. Darkness. You wake up, huddled beneath Sicart's table, to the loud storing of the scholar, who appears to have fallen asleep in his chair. Wake him up. What? Yes? Mm, what? Thank you for the paella. Scholar stretches and yawns. Oh yes, of course. Best paella you've ever tasted, right? It was certainly an experience. Are you leaving? You ought to stay. It's much safer here. Why don't you come with me? We have room for one more. He laughs nervously. Sound dangerous. Did you come to the New World because it was safe? No, I, uh, I suppose I didn't. Join us. It'll do you good. I joined Gutierrez once. That did me no good. No good at all. I'm not Gutierrez. No, oh, I see. Yes, right, fine, I'll come with you. You return to your expedition members and explain the situation while you wait for Sicart to pack his things. Quite some time passes. Just as you're about to go back and check on, up on him, he emerges with a small sack of personal items that he tosses into the back of one of the, your caravans. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Off we go. All right, we got a new... All right, we got a new companion. We have Gutierrez. Velasquez can be upgraded, yes. I want you to be upgraded. Gain the smoke bomb. Block, bloodthirsty, phenom from good patient, fortune favored. It would be nice if... Uh, it would be nice if you actually had, like, a better shot at stuff. Higher damage, a normal crit, short range. Ward, full arm. Fuck it up. Attack this. You know, let's do walk your shots because that's easier for him. Tinkering is up to 10, so now I can get him that one thing. Yay. 
And it's good because I needed him to get up to sergeant level because of um, the whole... Uh, 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 the whole thing about you need them needing to uh what was it like he's a narcissist so i needed to upgrade i needed to upgrade him and where is sicart art info one of the few survivors of felipe gutierrez's expedition that you've encountered on the mainland you found him in a small hut blah 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 lots of drugs 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 and lots of drugs your loving wife good i'm glad that she likes me would be really sad if she didn't. Uh, let's keep all the experience I have, because I still need another thousand to get anything else that would be useful. Can't go up there. Can't go through here still, though. But I think I'm coming to the edge of what I can do this area of the map. I don't see any other pathways. I do not see any other pathways. But we'll see. We have another person that will now be useful to us in the long run. Uh, let's see. Can't. Okay, I can go through here, so maybe there is something up here. Oh, yes, there is. There's a pathway up here. Don't know where it leads, though. This leads to some herbs. That won't be too bad either. Says, then, uh, Sakart, do some hunting as well. Ayana, do hunting. Twelve meat. Hell yeah. Is this all I can do? Oh, go this way. Where does this lead? I don't know, but there's a boar. I don't know where this leads, but... Oh, it leads to a mount? What is that? Mysterious cave. Ooh. That's a find. Maybe there's riches, because I need more riches. And I have a lot of meat to harvest, so let's get people on that. Serving. 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 There we go. And herbalism. Herbalism. Hell yeah. Do no harm. And everybody else has gone to bed or dispersed to man their post. Teresa sits alone by the campfire, staring into the embers. Is something wrong, Sanchez? He releases an elongated sigh. Have you ever studied Greek, Capitan? Not to any extent that matters. Why? The Greeks considered themselves with medicine among considered themselves with medicine, among other things. There is an oath written with many, many centuries ago that their healers used to make, which obligates them to use their skills and knowledge only to be to the benefit of the sick, never to their harm. Sounds worthwhile. But impossible as it turns out. I thought we could do good here. Forgive me, but I decided that even if you and everyone around me were determined to kill and maim all the natives, I would at least be able to take comfort in the fact that I personally have not had to raise a hand against them. That I would be good to them. No matter our intentions, we cause harm everywhere we go. We bring diseases. We let our own petty conflicts spill into the lives of these innocent people. We have no place here, Capitan. We have no right to be here at all. Stakes have been made, but we will try harder to do good from now on. She nods heavily, and I wish us all good luck, because it might, seems like we will need it. You should get some sleep. She is quiet for some time before she answers. I should. Good night, Captain Villa Capitan Villarejo. That's true. Like we haven't made we haven't been the cleanest. I've been we've been trying, but the road to hell is babed to good intentions, so I have to be careful about that. Now let's see what this cave has for us. The fountain of you? What? High in the mountains, you discover an ancient Olmec-style stone archway at the mouth of a great cave. Etchings in the stone seem to tell of a great gift from the gods, a taste of immortality awaiting those brave and pious enough to pass through labyrinthine caverns that hide many dangers. Let's enter. Entering the mountain, you find yourself in a beautiful grotto with a crystalline blue lake lit by rays of crisp sunlight sifting through dusty openings in the ceiling. 
Across from the entrance is a large, strong double door wrought from solid stone with an indentation in the center that appears to be a slot for an elaborate circular key of some sort. Detailed inscriptions in the rocks surrounding the door explains that the key has been split into three pieces, each piece located in a different part of the caverns, guarded by terrible dangers. We inspect the tunnels leading away from the main grotto, and there does see a indeed appear to be three of them, each marked by a large glyph etched into the rock above. It's a dungeon! The tunnels are very cramped, and bring your entire expedition into each of them would be foolish. You'll have to choose one of your people to accompany you to get each of the uh, keys. The Serpent Tunnel, the Maze Tunnel, and the Skull Tunnel. Let's go to the Serpent Tunnel. This tunnel is marked with a serpent glyph you think you hear hissing from the darkness. Um, would this be better to have a doctor with me, or would this be better to have... You know what? I hear hissing, so maybe... No, let's get a hunter in there. Lopez. This tunnel... You light two torches and venture in into the tunnel with Rafael Lopez by your side. The symbol outside the tunnel proves quite accurate as the tunnel opens up into a set of small grottos that appear to be breeding pits for poisonous snakes of all colors and sizes. The hunter expertly guides you along the least slithering path, showing you how to sweep at the snakes with your torch to keep them at bay. You reach the inner chamber hunt harmed, where a third of an elaborately decorated stone disc is resting in a niche dug straight into the rock wall, and we're going to take the disc and it's going to cause a trap, Indiana Jones style. You take the disc and you make your way back to the main grotto the way you came. Never mind. Enter the maze tunnel. Intricate glyph that must represent some sort of maze. If we're going to go with a maze, then we should probably get, um... Reyes in here. You tell Daniel Reyes to grab a torch and follow you as you enter the tunnel marked with a twirl of a glyph that can only represent a labyrinth. Within five turns through the twisted tunnels, you're completely and utterly lost as your initial plan to always turn right, followed by a few loops and dead ends. Um, you're supposed to always turn left. Follow the door, follow the wall to your left. Fortunately, your scholar has discovered small markings on the wall that he believes indicate the way to the central chamber to those who understand the symbolism. You follow him for what seems like hours until you enter a larger chamber with a third of a disc resting on an intricately decorated stone pedestal. Take it. Take the disc and leave the way you came, following the tiny glyphs that Reyes is interpreting to find the way back. Enter the skull tunnel. This is the only door in the tunnel, cave in the tunnel with an actual carved doorway for an entrance. The door is ambiguously marked with a skull, but further glyphs along the side of the entrance speak of ancient guardians and vengeful dead. Um, Isabella! Isabella, let's you and me. Let's go. You and Isabella, you and Is venture into the tunnel marked with an ominous skull. On the other side of the short, twisty passage, you enter a dank tomb with mummified corpses propped up against the walls on all sides. Nothing happens at first, but halfway through, the sinister crypt, screeching groans announce the only, the most superstitious part of you feared. The mummies have awakened to rebuke your intrusion into their resting place. Maintaining her calm, Isabella takes a hefty swing at one of the shambling corpses, cleaving it in nearly half and revealing it to be attached to some sort of mechanical pulley system. Having seen through the illusion, the two of you carve a path through the mechanical dead to the final chamber, carefully avoiding several lethal traps on the way, where you find a third of a stone disc and a nestled is nested on some sort of shrine. Take it. You grab the disc and return to the exit without further incident. Assemble the key! Having assembled the, all three pieces of the key into a full stone disc that slots neatly together, you place the disc into the slot in the door and turn it in full circle clockwise. The doors slide apart to reveal an enormous pyramid hidden in a small valley with steep rock walls on every side, barely large enough to contain the temple. As the awe-inspiring sight is revealed, a furious dispute is ignited among your servants. You don't even have time to understand that because of the uh, cause of the argument before one of them produces a dagger and thrusts it into the throat of another servant. In the blink of an eye, you have to fight on you have a fight on your hands. But I have to fight my own servants. You will not have time to prepare. Fair enough. Well, I guess my servants got obsessed, got really into the whole fight thing. Sorry. Guess I'm gonna have to kill a bunch of servants. Ten enemies. Oh, boy. Nikruma. Ugh. I'm so Why are my servants fighting me? I don't know. But we should probably get... Honestly, let's get you two here. And let's get Aragones up first to here, just so that he can be in position for... Doing a fate at some point. Uh, you get behind here because that will give you some nice covering fire. Nice cover shot. 
you get behind here for same reason. Unless it decides it's not that's not actually gonna be how it's done. Smoke bomb, what does it do? Throws a bomb that adds partial cover in a one space radius around the target. Ooh, very nice. Uh, you can't do anything right now. Everyone, just get on Overwatch, and we will just wait for everyone to come blasting in. Come on. There's ten of them, so this could be rough. There we go. Ooh, oh no, he might die. Block the shots. Ow for him. We're in a great position because they just have to attack us. And we can just keep holding out and Velasquez can keep healing. And my hunter and Tiana can keep taking pot shots at them. I wonder, can I actually get... No, I cannot. I... Let's need to wait for that. Can she fire from here? She cannot. So let's get her over here to this side. It's going to take her most of her movement, but this way she has clear line of sight. He's dead. And Overwatch... And Overwatch, and Overwatch, and keeping you here for right now. Okay, yeah, I, fi I figure my war, my fighters, are my soldiers are gonna miss, but better than better to try, right? Go Velasquez, try. Ow. Asshole. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't realize that there was a hole there. That's not good. I did not realize there was a hole there. Uh-oh. Let's see what should we do let's see for you let's start getting you let's start getting some damage here there we go then you oh wait no i need you i need you Shit, i can't faint that's unfortunate let's get you stabby stab Then you should be able to get some damage off on him. Not enough, though. Maybe Velasquez can do it? Nope, he cannot. Uh, actually, but I can get you over here. Do it. Then move into that position so that there is no way for them to get through. Um, let's have you stun him. And that's it for right now. Can't do anything else, so. Aha! Fuck you. Aha! Aha! Alright. Are gonna. Oh, there's a hole back there, too? I didn't realize that. Oh, no. My plan! My plan! The plan is not going to go as well as I was hoping. This isn't good. Well, this is awkward. Well, this is very awkward. Uh, Alright, go to heal him. I need to get rid of I need to get rid of some of you guys because this is not good in the slightest.
All right, let's get get a poison on the soldier. Cause... Then get, let's try to get you out of the way. Damn it. Now, at the very least, try to just focus fire on one of you at a time. See if we can get you through. Yes, here we go. And push you up, push up. Uh, let's stealth. I need you. No, no, never mind. Fuck, I, I just wasted that, David. That's not good. None of this is good. Gonna be a little rough. Ow. Well, this is my first time I've had a. I made some poor tactical decisions. Come on, kill him! All right, yay! Chip, chip, chipping away. Okay, let's see if we can get you killed. There we go. Which means I can get you firing at them. Get the soldier. Why do you miss? Why do you hate me so? Okay, you're good, so I need I need you over here. And get you over here for flanking. And let's get you just smack a deck. You start beat him. Yeah. And there we go. Partial cover. There we go. I don't know how much how good how much good that's actually gonna do, but ow, 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 dick, ow. ow. Oh, not enough, damn it. Oh, but it is. No, it's not. Look at the attack of opportunity. For that flanking bone. Get you over to a knife. For that flanking bone. There we go. Things are coming up, Millhouse. There we go. Much better. And you should die now. There we go. Down to two enemies. Stun you. So that I can then get Aragones up to there. You get up to position there. And let's go. This is gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt, but I think we got this. You, I need you to heal. There we go. He'll survive another hit. There we go. A little more dicey this time, but we got it. We got it. All right, finish it off. There we go. Flawless victory. There we go. You stand victorious, but half your servants are lost. You grab a hold of the participants in the dispute that sparked this confrontation. What was that about?
The man answers in broken Spanish. Please forgive, Capitan. They not want to go further. Fear pyramid. Say so ancient, powerful project protections. We are tempting fate to go on. We say, go, you go. We all go, our masters be very angry. They fight before. They are fools. I would not have forced them to go. The man not surprised. Yes, Capitan. Ascend the pyramid. Your expedition ascends the stairs to the top of the temple where you find a beautiful fountain seemingly untouched by the passage of time. Your people drink from its waters and are astounded to find that the marks left upon them by the jungle vanish. The lines on their faces are smoothed away. You appear to have discovered the fountain of youth. Or a really trippy drug thing. So, are we going to be bordering into magic realism here? Is there, like, actual magic in the world, but we're barely going to touch on it? Because that's that would be interesting. Drink some water. Carefully fill your canteen with water from the mountain fountain. It's almost magical healing powers will be invaluable in any battle from now on. Okay, so we just found the bloody fountain of youth. Okay. That's something to do. I think that was, that was a good excursion. I liked that. Now, now to get the hell out of here. So, I think that's all I can do in this area, right? Go through here. Auto sign. There we go. Well, meat. We keep going. All right. Uh, let's see. Come on, come on, come on. How many days has it been since the start of the Sierra's thing? It's been 10 days for that, I know, but like, I don't know how long I've actually been out and about, so oh, we'll figure it out. Okay. Is there any no contextuals? Doing pretty well. I've never, I don't think I've ever felt like in danger of running low on uh, rations. Which is very good. Treasure is the name of the treasure. Oh, and it and the map is not nearly as like actually big as it's try as it tries to show it on the actual thing. Because there's just whole swaths I just can't get to. I can't get through that. So we just keep going, I guess. Yep. Sounds about right. Well, I think it's been almost 10 days, right? But oh, we'll grab this. Maybe maybe once we get back, it'll be 10 days. We'll see. I'm only losing two rations per time, too, so that's useful. 18 meat this time, so we can do some preserving. A couple more rations back. We make it? Yes, we can. Aha! Replenished. Hell yeah. Getting all that dank herb. Get another. Get all these chests. All of the supplies. We make it back towards the fortress. Gutierrez at the fortress. Little meat consumption, so Anacona. Uh do some preserving. And Sanchez, do some herbalism. Eating meat, hell yeah. Yay! Is it fixed? Are we good? How many more days we got? Hogar Dolce de Hogar. Gutierrez's old fortress has received quite the makeover. Its walls have been repaired and reinforced, its windows and doors replaced, and your banner hangs proudly from the ramparts. Laszlo Pollock meets you in the courtyard with a look of great pride. 
Welcome to your new stronghold, Captain Villarejo. We're all done. What do you think? Very good. You've done a great job. Laszlo beams proudly. Gracias, Capitan. Oh, you wouldn't believe who arrived in the caravan yesterday. A joyous Italian accent and voice booms behind you. Bruno, my dear boy. When last I saw you, you had a dozen people on a ship. Now look at you. I didn't build it, Umberto. Umberto Il Rossi, it's great to see a familiar face. Umberto gives you a manly handshake and a fatherly half-hug. Hell yeah. I hope you will allow me to stay and help you improve and extend this fine fortress. With the rebels out of the picture, Governor Manzanedo has loosened up quite a bit, but I felt like my services were no longer required on Hispaniola. I'll be happy to leave the fortress in your hands while I'm away. Umberto stretches his back and shifts his considerable weight back and forth. And I will move my belongings into the splendid office that Paulik had been using during the restoration. Umberto leans in a little closer. If you'll accept the piece of advice given in all modesty, I strongly recommend you make it a priority to restore the barracks. If we have a garrison here, we will be able to much in a much stronger position later. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sure we shall speak again soon. See, his work completed. Laszlo joins your ranks once again, once more. Now that the fortress has been rebuilt, the following construction progress have been av have become available. I kind of want to build a trading post because I want to start getting trade through here and getting valuables. Valuables. But a store storerooms would be really nice too. Let's do the longer projects first. So I'm gonna build a trading post first. Building a trading post will allow you to trade with, with Santo Domingo. Since you own the trading post, the rates will be more favorable than usual. It will take 12 days and cost you a thousand valuables. Okay, oh, okay, it tells me what I do. Build barracks. Allow you to maintain a garrison in the fortress, which can make a crucial difference down the line. It will take five days and cost you 1,500. Storerooms enable you to deposit your resources in the fortress where they will be safe from bandits and savages. It will take five days and cost you 2,000 valuables. Okay. Chapel will boost morale to all your pious followers every seven days if you visit the chapel to pray. Tavern. Let you buy a round of drinks every week um, every week to give a small morale boost to all your followers. You will also be able to pick up hints and rumors from the tavern keeper. It will take six days. Workshop. Buy certain items for use in combat. Additionally, your workshop will regularly generate a small amount of crafting material if you're choosing. A stable. Doubles your moves for one day when you visit it. This allows you to move twice as far as normal on the first day after you leave your fortress. Uh, actually, I am going to listen to Umberto, and I'm going to build the barracks first. Let's get that out of the way. I'll inform the workers, and we'll get started immediately. All right. We got a fantastic new fort, new home to deal home and we cleared a decent chunk like not as much like in terms of like area but got a lot of story stuff done we got a fortress i found the motherfucking fountain of youth um i've explored so many places jesus maybe i'll go up to that totanak village after that but that'll have to be for next time i think it's a good place to end this episode all right see you guys next time